Philippines, good evening. Mayong gabi sa Tibok Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. Broadcasting uh, right here in the heart of uh, uh, Central Visayas, Cebu. Mauni si Eric Espina. And uh, tonight, uh, we're going to be focusing on a very interesting topic. One that has continuously been festering for uh, decades for that matter. And has always undergone several processes under various presidents. But it's still as of the moment, still in the back burners. But uh, of recent, uh, it again uh, showed its uh, ugly head uh, when the issue on Sabah uh, became front and center as far as uh, the national discussion is concerned. So tonight, our topic will be exactly that, about Sabah, and we will not forget about the Jabida massacre. So today, we're going to have uh, Mr. Ferdi Pashon, from Manila, who happens to be the chairperson or chairman of NATFIL, or which is the Nationalist Filipinos. Good evening, Ferdy. Mayang gabi, Kai Eric, and to all the uh, televiewers in uh, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Yes. Uh, first question, Ferdy, no? Um, it came about very fairly recently, uh, it came out in the news, that Sabah, uh, or Malaysian authorities have stopped uh, giving some form of uh, allowances or rental money, I don't know what they want to call it, uh, rental money with the uh, Kiram family. Uh, why do you think this happened? Uh, is this a bad omen as far as the Philippine interest is concerned? What is, what is your thoughts? Well, uh, I think uh, because uh, our government today is uh, uh, very friendly towards uh, Malaysia, uh, Malaysia has become uh, emboldened to stop paying the rent to the heirs of the uh, Sultan of Sulu, uh, which is in violation of the 1939 uh, ruling of uh, the, high, the British High Court of Lord Borneo, wherein the uh, judgment was that uh, uh, the heirs must be given the uh, uh, rental uh, and it should be adjusted with uh, inflation. But uh, Malaysia did not adjust it for inflation and now has altogether stopped paying the rent. So I think the heirs now have the uh, uh, cause to file a case, uh, probably in the Philippine court, uh, to go after the civil uh, liability of uh, Malaysia. And uh, I think uh, this will prosper. And uh, I think they should uh, uh, collect, not just the... Uh, uh, old amount, but uh, the amount adjusted for inflation. Uh, you mentioned about filing uh, some kind of a court case no, against uh, Malaysia. Do you see the possibility of even the Philippine government taking an active part or an actual interest into such a case in order, in, order, in order to be able to help the Kiram family, who is, by the way, are Filipino citizens? I think uh, as far as uh, Secretary uh, 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 Teddy Boy Luxin is concerned, I think uh, he will be able to extend the uh, assistance. But uh, other than him, I have not heard any other uh, government uh, official talking about uh, the, uh, uh, the interest of the Sultanate of Sulu and the heirs of uh, the Sultan. Fairly recently, we heard uh, Secretary Teddy Boy Loxin of uh, the Foreign Affairs uh, <laughs> uh, coming out with a tweet with regards to the USAID referral of Sabah as part of Malaysia. How do you see that? Well, uh, it's very wrong to say that uh, Sabah is part of uh, Malaysia because uh, it has not been... Uh, ruled upon by the uh, World Court or the International Court of Justice, uh, please remember that the Philippines uh, have always uh, volunteered to uh, bring the matter regarding the uh, proper uh, ownership and sovereignty of El Sabah to the International Court of Justice. But uh, Malaysia has been uh, uh, adamant in its refusal to uh, submit it to the International Court of Justice. Please remember that uh, the uh, World Court or the International Court of Justice cannot uh, obtain any jurisdiction over any matter 
unless uh, both parties or all parties concerned are uh, voluntarily uh, uh, surrendering themselves to the uh, jurisdiction of the uh, World Court. And uh, in fact, the Philippines has the upper hand because as I said, uh, there is this ruling of Judge Makaski in 1939 uh, that uh, the sovereignty or, or dominion over Sabah belongs to the Commonwealth, what was then the Commonwealth of the Philippines, and the uh, civil uh, ownership uh, belongs to the uh, heirs of the Sultan of Sulu. So we have a strong case, and uh, this is why the Malaysians have been abandoned in their refusal to submit the matter to the uh, World Court. Your thoughts on, if you recall, in the forming of the uh, state or the country of Sabah, there was a United Nations referendum, or call it plebiscite for that matter, with the British uh, being the uh, colony mother or colonizing mother of uh, Malaysia. And uh, it seemed to have come out in the results that many of the people of Sabah wanted to join the Confederation of Malaysia. Uh, what, do you think that was uh, a fair determination of the will of the people of Sabah at the time? No, because uh, it, was, uh, it was administered by the British and the British uh, were not uh, uh, neutral because uh, they really uh, uh, wanted to uh, give Sabah to Malaysia. Remember that uh, just a few days after our independence, on July 4, uh, 1946, the uh, British, uh, uh, the Queen of England, issued a uh, unilateral uh, proclamation that henceforth Sabah belongs to uh, the British Empire without uh, consulting or getting the permission of the Republic of the Philippines nor the Sultanate of Sulu. So, in effect, the British uh, stole or robbed Sabah from the Filipino people and from the Sultanate of Sulu. Therefore, when they conducted the uh, referendum or uh, plebiscite, uh, it was highly questionable because uh, uh, there is even a question whether there was indeed a uh, referendum, uh, referendum or plebiscite conducted. Mm -hmm. So, it's highly uh, questionable. Uh, that's why uh, what, uh, what should be done is to uh, uh, bring the matter to the International Court of Justice. That's the proper uh, venue. What do you think at the time was the British interest in terms of uh, trying to bring in Sabah into the entire uh, confederation of Sarawak with the uh, mainland uh, Kuala Lumpur and the uh, peninsula uh, Malaysia? Well, uh, it's oil and natural gas because uh, remember that uh, Britain is a uh, part owner of Shell mm -hmm. uh, together with the uh, Netherlands and uh, the uh, sole owner of British Petroleum or BP. And uh, the Americans did not uh, help us because uh, the British uh, promised the Americans that their uh, oil companies will also have a presence in uh, Sabah. That's why uh, the British were the ones who uh, have given arms and uh, training to the Moro National uh, Liberation Front mm -hmm. to create uh, disturbance in Southern Philippines so that we will forget about uh, Sabah and just concentrate on the... Uh, MMLF rebellion. Mm -hmm. So the British are uh, not uh, neutral uh, with regards to Sabah, so they have they should have no say. And uh, the fact that they gave Sabah to Malaysia uh, without any permission from the Republic of the Philippines nor from the Sultanate of Sulu uh, betrays the uh, uh, the ill motives of uh, Britain. Uh, and in fact, they also fought a war, a so-called confrontasi. Uh, with Indonesia because mm -hmm. the British also stole uh, Sarawak mm -hmm. from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned about Shell or uh, being one of the uh, interests of the British Crown. Are, are we saying that uh, they, was, they were going to get a better deal as far as uh, keeping Sabah with Malaysia? They were going to get a higher percentage of uh, oil revenues or putting up a lot of... Uh, uh, shell plants or, or oil exploration in that area? Yes, because uh, remember that Malaysia is only an invention of uh, Britain. In fact, the name Malaysia was stolen by the British from President Quezon. It was President Quezon who coined the name uh, Malaysia. 
So, in fact, uh, the Malaysians were not uh, clamoring for independence. It, it was the British that gathered all the uh, sultanates, the various sultanates in the Malay Peninsula, and uh, they, they got uh, Sabah and uh, Sarawak without permission from the Philippines and Indonesia, respectively, and uh, formed the uh, so-called Federation of Malaysia. Uh, so... It's just an invention of the British so that uh, they will appear to be uh, benevolent uh, uh, imperialists that uh, uh, gave uh, independence to uh, their former colony. But uh, of course, because uh, it is just their invention, it is just their creation, they can dictate the share of the British Empire from the oil and the natural gas in Saba. Uh, the American interest here, uh, with regards to their former mother uh, colonizer Britain as against their former colony which was the Republic of the Philippines. Um, did the Americans see their interest lie better with their former mother co colonizer? Yes, I think uh, because uh, first of all they uh, have uh, racial uh, discrimination. They would prefer to be with the white British than the brown Filipinos. Mm -hmm. And of course, because of uh, the share that they will be getting. Remember that uh, uh, many of the American oil companies have uh, oil fields in uh, Sabah. So up to now, if you go to Sabah, uh, the, you can see the American oil companies, the British oil companies, uh, Malaysian Petronas, and the uh, uh, Petron, uh, which is now a uh, private corporation. Uh, belonging to San Miguel Corporation. So Petron is one of the uh, uh, oil companies uh, that has uh, oil fields in Sabah aside from the Americans, the British, uh, the Dutch, and the Malaysians. Mm -hmm. the, this, this issue on Sabah was, f again, festering during the time of Josdado Makapagal. Um, did then President Justado Makapagal or Kong Dadong as uh, he was fondly called, did he make a misstep in trying to recover uh, Saba because he was able to recover the Turtle Islands but what, what missteps occurred as far as his diplomatic initiatives were concerned in trying to be able to regain back a bigger territory for the Republic of the Philippines? Uh, I think because he was not a soldier he did not uh, heed the uh, advice of uh, President Sukarno of uh, Indonesia for uh, the Philippines and Indonesia to attack uh, the British in uh, Sabah simultaneously. The, in the Indonesians will attack uh, 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 Sarawak while the Philippines was supposed to attack uh, Sabah uh, from the north and from the east. Mm -hmm. But uh, not being a soldier, uh, President Makapagal opted to uh, uh, go to the uh, legal route. But uh, that was a mistake because uh, the British and the uh, Malaysians do not know any uh, uh, legal uh, language. All they know is the, uh, the language of force. I remember that uh, Josdado Makapagal was part of the Mafilindo. Uh, yes, Mafilindo. Of, yeah, Mafilindo. And then uh, during their meeting here in the Philippines, when there was supposed to be uh, the tripartite uh, convergence of all the three uh, leaders of uh, the respective countries, uh, I think uh, Indonesia was a bit irked about the forming of the Confederation of uh, Malaysia at the time. and. Uh, I don't know if uh, you're aware, there were also reports that already actually soldiers of Indonesia was being ordered to go at the border, at the border of uh, Sarawak already. Uh, yes, in fact, there was a, an actual uh, shooting war called Confrontasi mm -hmm. uh, between Malaysia and Indo Indonesia supposedly, but it was actually between Indonesia and Britain because during that time, Malaysia really had no any uh, armed forces to speak of. Mm -hmm. So when the Indonesians uh, entered Sarawak, uh, they found themselves at war with the British rather than the uh, Malaysians. So mm -hmm. it was the uh, so-called Confrontasi War, uh, which we should have joined uh, and we would have won against the British. Mm -hmm. But uh, President Makapagal opted to uh, 
stay in the so-called legal route uh, which was ineffective. So when President uh, Marcos uh, uh, started the, the uh, training of uh, uh, Tausugs in Corridor uh, for the uh, Operation Merdeka, it was too late because the Indonesians were already defeated by the British in the Confrontasi. We should have been the Philippines and the, the Indonesians together and not Indonesians alone. Okay, Ferdi, we're going to talk about Merdeka, uh, Operation uh, Merdeka uh, when we get back. But uh, the Philippines and Indonesia joining together against uh, Britain in a post-colonial era would have really would have really broken the entire spirit of Britain maintaining its uh, its its royal presence in uh, developing countries which were already entering into their independence when Republic of Okay, okay we're back with uh, Republica at uh, kausa pa rin po natin si uh, chairman ng NATFIL or Nationalist Filipinos si uh, Ferdi Pasyon sa Manila so Ferdi, this was a post-colonial era and uh, Britain didn't seem to want to let the uh, dynamics in the region take over and because they wanted to make uh, Malaysia bigger, uh, have a bigger territory with, with Sabah part of it. Um, when, when Makapagal went on forward and then you have now Ferdinand Marcos, how did President Ferdinand Marcos approach the problem of, of Sabah? At first, uh, he was willing to... Uh exhaust all legal means. Uh, remember that uh, uh, the Tungku, Tungku Abdul Rahman, when he uh, went to uh, Manila, uh, he uh, signed the Manila Declaration wherein uh, Malaysia committed itself to bring the uh, matter mm -hmm. to the International Court of Justice or World Court. Mm -hmm. But uh, despite uh, many uh, uh, protestations from the Philippines, uh, Malaysia remains on its uh, promise and so President Marcos had no recourse but to use uh, uh, force mm -hmm. because uh, we are in the right. So how else can we uh, obtain uh, possession of something that we own unless we take it forcibly? Mm -hmm. So the uh, Sultan of Sulu uh, lent his uh, forces, the Royal uh, Sulu Armed Forces, to the armed forces of the Philippines, wherein the armed forces of the Philippines uh, uh, trained the uh, Royal uh, Sultanate forces in Corridor. This, but, is, uh, this is now what is called as Operation Merdeka. Not, uh, not what is popularly called as Jabida Massacre, but go ahead. Uh, go ahead yes, uh, uh, Jabida is uh, just a, uh, a, uh, an invented name so that the armed forces will be able to uh, identify who has been uh, supplying the British and the Malaysians and the Americans with uh, sensitive information. So uh, it appears that uh, it's Senator uh, Nino Aquino who was supplying the British, the Americans and the Malaysians with uh, secret information from the AFP. Before we go to Senator Nino Aquino, what basically was... Uh Merdeka or Oplan Merdeka all about? Operation Merdeka was uh, about uh, training uh, volunteers from different provinces of the Philippines including uh, one volunteer from Tarlac, Alfonso Mamaroglo. Mm -hmm. uh, because President Marcos wanted all uh, provinces of the Philippines to be represented in the volunteer army that was supposed to retake Sabah for the Republic of the Philippines. But this but, was this was part of the Marcos plan, but uh, uh, in terms of already when there is actual insurgency or actual war, but the beginning was, was President Marcos, uh, based on research, encouraging Filipinos to actually migrate, to go to Sabah, to populate it with uh, as many Filipinos as possible. Yes, in fact, uh, there was already uh, an advanced team uh, secret team uh, of the armed forces there. Uh, uh, they uh, pretended to be uh, uh, telegraph uh, workers, uh, elect elect electric company workers, and one of them even became a driver of the governor of uh, Sabah. So there, there were already so-called, uh, you know, in war you must have infiltrators. So we already had advanced team there. 
Uh, but uh, when uh, Senator Mino Aquino came up with this privileged speech uh, in which he, the Malaysian invented uh, Jabida massacre was uh, exposed, uh, the real massacre happened in Sabah because the Malaysians uh, massacred our advanced team there. Uh, there were uh, hundreds of Filipinos that were massacred by the Malaysians because of the privileged speech of uh, Nino Aquino. Uh, he claimed that uh, President Marcos had the Tausugs in uh, Corridor massacred. But uh, in a later uh, privileged speech, Nino Aquino admitted that there was no such massacre. And the only one who died was uh, certain Lieutenant uh, Nepomuceno who was murdered by uh, the volunteer from Tanglak, Alfonso Mamaroglo, mm -hmm. who is uh, identified with Nino Aquino. All of a sudden, Alfonso Mamaroglo, without any reason, shot Lieutenant Nepomuceno. So, the only cadaver found uh, in the so-called Jabida uh, massacre was that of uh, Lieutenant of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Two quick questions for thee. There were stories about a certain individual who swam from Corregidor and landed in Cavite and then was discovered by the governor of Cavite and then from there this person was put before uh, Senator Nino Aquino as a backgrounder before his privileged speech. What have you heard about this? Yes, uh, this uh, Jibina Raula uh, allegedly swam uh, all the way from Corregidor to Cavite. Uh, all uh, Philippine Navy personnel will tell you that that is impossible because there are many sharks <laughs> and the, uh, the, uh, the currents will, uh, will make it impossible for you to reach uh, Cavite. Even uh, vessels find it hard to uh, navigate those currents, how much more a human being. And uh, how come this uh, J.B. Maraula uh, suddenly uh, was uh, so-called rescued by uh, uh, Montano and, uh, and the Liberal Party in uh, Cavite, of all people. Uh, so, but uh, according to some sources, uh, this uh, Araula uh, regretted what uh, he has done uh, because uh, it started the, uh, the war in Mindanao. And it was used by the British and the Malaysians to create the Moro National Liberation Front and uh, uh, the SAS commandos of Britain trained the uh, first batch of uh, MNLF in Palau Pangkor, as uh, you very well know. Uh, b before you go to Palau Pangkor first, let's 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 uh, let's let's flesh out what was the role of uh, uh, a, a, a military man called Martellino. Well, uh, Colonel Martellino, uh, from the time of. Uh, uh, President Quezon was already uh, enamored with the idea of having uh, a Republic of uh, Malaysia mm -hmm. as uh, advocated by uh, President Quezon because President Quezon wanted one republic for all Malays uh, mm -hmm. composed of the Philippines, uh, Malaysia, uh, Brunei, and uh, Indonesia. A pan-Malayan uh, republic, mm -hmm. of course, to be to be headed by President Quezon. Yes. Um, uh, so he called it Malaysia. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, Colonel Martellino uh, wrote the book entitled "Someday Malaysia," mm -hmm. wherein uh, he dedicates the book to President Quezon for coming up with the idea of forming a pan-Malaysian uh, uh, republic uh, of the Malays. Mm -hmm. uh, so Colonel Martellino. Uh, was the one who was uh, entrusted uh, by uh, President Marcos to uh, train the uh, commandos that were supposed to uh, retake Saba for the Republic of the Philippines. And uh, according to Nino Aquino, Colonel Martellino was the one who was uh, machine gunning the uh, uh, trainees in uh, Corridor. Why will he do that? Uh, uh, th th there is no reason for him to do that. Uh, first of all, the claim or allegation of Nino Aquino is false mm -hmm. that uh, the Tausugs uh, uh, rebelled because uh, uh, they found out that they were going to attack uh, Saba. Uh, when in fact, they all along they knew uh, that uh, they were going to retake Saba. It was their sultan, mm -hmm. the sultan of Sulu, that sent them for training in mm -hmm. Corridor mm -hmm. so that uh, Saba will be retaken. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they volunteered their own services in order to retake back 
what was part of their ancestral domain or part of the yes. heritage of Taosug, which is Saba. So they were, yes. they were not actually forced into this uh, by the AFP or Ferdinand Marcos. That's what you're saying. No, there was no uh, force or intimidation whatsoever. Uh, they were the ones who really wanted to retake uh, Saba because they felt aggrieved that mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the British, the Americans, and the Malaysians uh, took away Saba from the Sultanate of Sulu and from the Taosug people. Mm -hmm. There are also reports uh, that say that part of the uprising or the cause of the Jabida massacre because was because uh, Colonel Martellino was not giving the soldiers their uh, salaries, their allowances, and he was out somewhere in Hong Kong spending the money of the entire Operation Merdeka. That was farthest from the truth, no? Because uh, Colonel Martellino uh, is not corrupt, no? He, he was not a corrupt person. He was highly uh, committed to the cause. And that is just a, a pure invention of the British and uh, uh, their puppet, Nino Yaquino. Uh, in fact, uh, all the soldiers there involved are uh, nationalists. Uh, uh, you have their uh, Abadilla, uh, uh, Colonel Reyes, uh, Alejandro Melchor, mm -hmm. my own uncle, Commander uh, Pedro Pasion uh, Jr., mm -hmm. they are all committed nationalists. So it's farthest from the truth. Uh, delegations against Colonel Martellino are uh, very far from the truth. So why did a Senator of the Republic of the Philippines uh, go out and make a privileged speech regarding a matter that involved a territory of the Republic of the Philippines conflicted with Malaysia and broadcast it all over the country and all over the world. What, what was the motive? Well, the motive was to uh, stop the Philippines from uh, retaking Sabah because uh, remember that uh, the uh, in-law of uh, Nino Aquino uh, uh, Senator Sumulong. Uh, Juan Sumulong. Uh, yeah, before uh, Ninoy became a senator, uh, Senator Sumulong delivered a privileged speech uh, wherein he said that uh, Saba belongs to the British and not to the Philippines. Uh, this was rebutted by uh, Senator uh, Jovito Salonga who delivered a point-by-point -point speech wherein he explained why uh, the Philippines is the proper owner of uh, Saba and not the British. And then Senator uh, Salonga asked uh, Senator Sumulong, are you not a Filipino? Why are you siding with the British on such a matter as this? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, because uh, Senator Sumulong retired from being uh, in the employ of the British, uh, he passed on the baton to uh, his uh, nephew-in-law. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Ninoy uh, Aquino uh, so Ninoy Aquino continued the tradition of uh, Senator Sumulong of uh, treason against the Republic so Ninoy Aquino was just uh, continuing the tradition mm -hmm. uh, Aside from trying to stop Operation Merdeka was there something more I, I don't want to use the word devious about uh, Senator Aquino making such an announcement and the worst part is to claim there was a massacre and there was no massacre later on which he retraced or he, he retracted. So was this part of his plan to gain national prominence? Uh, was this already all part of the timetable that eventually he would run for president? Yes, of course. Uh that's part of it, no? because the Americans wanted uh, and the British wanted uh, Ninoy to become president in 1973. So that's part of the plan to demonize Marcos at the expense of the Filipino people and the Republic of the Philippines. Uh, however, we should not uh, forget the fact that uh, even before that, uh, Ninoy was already instructed by the Americans and the British to form the Mindanao independence movement, even though Ninoy is not from Mindanao but mm -hmm. from Tarlac. Mm -hmm. So Ninoy Aquino dutifully obeyed the uh, instructions of the Americans and the British and formed the Mindanao independence movement together with uh, Nene Pimentel, uh, uh, Nurmus Mori, and uh, Alonto, and uh, uh, the other leaders in uh, Mindanao. Yeah. So how come, how come somebody from Tarlac from the Mindanao independence movement. But before, the, before that, let us remember that Nino Aquino uh, admitted that he was used by the CIA mm -hmm. to try to bring down uh, President Sukarno from power. 
And in fact, he was almost captured by the forces of President Sukarno in uh, Indonesia, were it not for the CIA who uh, rescued him and brought him to Tarlac. Mm -hmm. This was during the, I think this was also the very same word they used, Merdeka for Indonesia. And yes. uh, I remember that uh, you had uh, Salvador Laurel as one of the individuals who, uh, being a student in UP before, who was interested to, to help and join uh, in the Merdeka movement of Indonesia so that Indonesia will become a, a free country. And uh, based upon research, there were certain soldiers of Indonesia, uh, a, a, a still to be born uh, nation, that were being brought to Sambuanga Hospital. And in fact, they're saying that some of the weapons that were used by the Indonesians came from the Philippines. Uh, you, you've heard of that, uh, Ferdy? Yes, uh, and uh, from my research, uh, the reason why uh, Ninay Aquino uh, obtained the uh, Hacienda Luisita was uh, per instructions of the Americans because uh, uh, the, the Americans built uh, an airfield, a secret uh, Air Force base in Hacienda Luisita. Okay, for you, in, hold on, hold on. And hold on to that note, that's a very interesting point after Republican returns. Okay, kahinabi pa gaya po nato sa uh, ang uh, nangulo sa uh, Natville o Nationalist Filipinos. Uh, we're talking to the chairperson or chairman of the Natville Nationalist Filipinos. Siya po walang iba kung hindi si Ferdy Pasyon. So, Ferdy, you were talking about a possible airfield in Hacienda Luisita. Yes, as per my research, uh, it was the Americans that uh, encouraged uh, Nino Aquino to uh, obtain uh, uh, Hacienda Luisita uh, so that the Americans will be able to put up an airfield wherein they can uh, bring via airplanes uh, personal weapons and ammunition uh, to uh, Indonesia to uh, destabilize uh, the government of uh, President uh, Sukarno because President Sukarno was a nationalist, mm -hmm. he was anti-imperialist, and he fought against the British in the Confrontasi War in Sarawak. So the Americans and the British wanted uh, Sukarno to be ousted. So they used uh, Nino Aquino, their favorite uh, agent, mm -hmm. to uh, try to oust uh, Sukarno from power. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you mentioned the CIA, you mentioned Nino Aquino in other readings uh, in the book of um, Yap, if I, I forget his first name. Uh, Nino Aquino again uh, is front and center again and right in the middle or is the gravitas in the creation of the, of the uh, New People's Army and the Communist Party of uh, the Philippines along with uh, a certain congressman which I will not mention. <laughs> but uh, okay, so Ferdino. Uh, we see all of this happening. Uh, you mentioned Senator Sumulong, you mentioned Senator Nino Aquino. Was, would it be fair enough to say that they were getting some kind of, not just political support, but would it be fair enough to say that they were also getting some kind of financial support in order to push for uh, their own respective ambitions, political, their, their national uh, aspirations for the presidency? Yes, uh, remember that uh, Nino Aquino was able to obtain Hacienda Luisita by asking money from the Republic of the Philippines through his uh, uh, wedding uh, godfather, Pres uh, President uh, Magsaysay. Uh, however, President Magsaysay, uh, although he gave the money for, to Nino Aquino to purchase Hacienda Luisita, uh, dollars and pesos, dollars from the Central Bank and pesos, from the uh, GSIS and SSS, uh, President Magsaysay uh, put a, uh, a uh, condition that after 10 years, uh, 10 years from 1957, uh, Hacienda Luisita will be distributed to the farmers. Mm -hmm. But uh, in 1967, uh, when uh, President Magsaysay was already uh, dead, uh, instead of giving the uh, Hacienda Luisita to the farmers, what uh, Nino Aquino gave to the farmers were uh, bullets uh -huh. in the first uh, in the first Hacienda Luisita massacre recorded in history, wherein the uh, the lawyers for the farmers uh, was uh, Attorney Jose Malbar Villegas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, uh, I think Batangueño. Yes, uh, he was able to successfully defend the uh, the farmers 
uh, such that uh, the military tribunal uh, sentenced Nino Aquino and uh, Commander Dante to death, to death uh, by a firing squad for that uh, massacre of uh, farmers in Hacienda Luisita that happened in 1967. How damaging in your own analysis, in your own assessment, was the privileged speech made by Senator Aquino before the public um, informing everyone about the plan of President Ferdinand Marcos in the process of retaking Saba? How damaging was it to our national interest and our national security? Up to now, we are uh, feeling the effects of the uh, big damage that uh, Nino Aquino uh, did through that uh, privileged speech. Although he delivered another privileged speech asking uh, apology, saying that there was no such massacre, but uh, the first privileged speech already did the damage. Uh, so that uh, up to now, uh, we are importing oil and natural gas instead of having our own oil and natural gas. And uh, we are sending uh, domestic helpers to Malaysia when in fact before, I remember, the Malaysians were the domestic helpers in the Philippines. So it has done a tremendous damage to us. Uh, but uh, I don't know if his uh, uh, heirs, the heirs of Nino Aquino, are now benefiting from uh, Petron's presence in uh, Sabah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Petron, according to some, I don't know if it is true, is owned part partly by uh, the Aquino Kowanko family. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, the first uh, gasoline station of Petron in Malaysia, the, the one who cut the ceremonial ribbon, was then President Benigno Aquino III, mm -hmm. um, Noy He was the one who cut the ceremonial ribbon of the first Petron gasoline station in Kuala Lumpur. And this was a conflict of interest. But uh, when asked uh, why he did do it, he said that uh, it doesn't matter because uh, the Philippines did not spend a single centavo for his trip to Kuala Lumpur and it was all expenses paid by the Malaysians. Next question, Ferdi. Um, I think it's the normal uh, practice in uh, the Senate as well as in the House. Could Ninoy have employed a different form of procedure in order to come out with a legislative investigation or a Senate Blue Ribbon investigation? Could it have been done in executive session? That's my point. Could, should Ninoy have done it in executive session? Of course, because uh, he was the representative of the opposition, of the minority, in the National Security Council. And as such, uh, he's, he's not allowed to uh, speak about anything that was discussed uh, in the official uh, meetings of the National Security Council. Uh, so he did it in violation of his oath. Uh, in the National Security Council. So, uh, in effect, he is a traitor. He violated the uh, secrecy of the National Security Council. That's why uh, he, he, the, the secret plan of the armed forces to regain Saba was exposed to the whole world and the Philippines was uh, put in a shameful uh, uh, situation. We looked uh, like the... Uh, uh, the contrabidas, you know, uh, when in fact we were just uh, trying to retake what is rightfully ours. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that was a tremendous damage, not only to the country, but to the people. And up to now, we are feeling the effects. Mm -hmm. uh, this this uh, privileged speech of Nino Aquino exposed to Malaysia the secret plan of the Philippines in order to retake Sabah. And so this became their plan, their counter plan, their reverse arrow, so to speak, in order to finally sponsor the Moro National Liberation Front with uh, Chairman Nur Miswari and, as you mentioned a while ago, in uh, being trained in uh, Palau Pangkor to make the Mindanao Independence Movement as the stepping stone for creating a liberation front when actually their funding was for their own interest, the interest of Malaysia, in order to protect Sabah. Yes, the British knew that... Uh uh, Operation uh, Orjabida Massacre is, uh, is uh, just a figment of the imagination of uh, Nino Aquino. But the British used the uh, so-called Jabida Massacre as a justification to create the Moro National Liberation Front to provide a, an armed wing mm -hmm. for the Moro Mindanao Independence Movement. So what the British did was uh, to prepare the... Uh, 
uh, the course of action for the eventual uh, taking of Mindanao from the Philippines into the fold of the Federation of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, the British were involved in the uh, creation of the Bangsamoro. Uh, because the ultimate aim is to detach Mindanao from the Philippines and uh, make it uh, the 14th state of the Federation of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what, what we're seeing now in the chain of events, uh, as, as you mentioned, is that Malaysia finding out, discovering about the Operation Merdeka against them, just simply shifted the operation against Mindanao already. Now the target is already Mindanao. In short, the Malaysians put the problem and gave the problem back to us by making use of native local individuals in southern Mindanao to cause the liberation movement. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's, that's what they did. So that uh, the Philippines will be distracted and will no longer uh, pursue the recovery of uh, Sabah. Mm -hmm. So we were uh, engaged in a deadly war with the MLF in, the, in 1972, 1973, and up to 1976. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it was, and up to now, uh, there is still uh, the and Mindanao going on, and the creation of the Bangsa Moro, which is uh, a state. Bangsa is a state. Mm -hmm. Moro is Islamic, so it is an Islamic state, just like Malaysia, because uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, uh, Mahathir Muhammad uh, had a speech wherein he said that Malaysia is an Islamic state. Mm -hmm. So, Bangsa Moro, when you translate it to English, Bangsa is a state, Moro is Islamic. So, it is also an Islamic state, just like Malaysia. So, how do you read the chain or the change in character? Uh, a prodigal Filipino, if I might use that word, uh, Chairman Nur Miswari is now saying that Malaysia is neo-colonialist and that they used the MNLF uh, in a war against the Philippines. Uh, this is also in relation to the MILF. How do you read this? How come Chairman uh, Nurmiswari has changed his tone, and now the fight is between MNLF, and what is now the role of the MILF? Well, uh, Chairman Nurmiswari uh, uh, became uh, awakened because during the time of Gloria Arroyo, when uh, Gloria Arroyo uh, uh, set aside Nurmis Wari, uh, Nurmis Wari was forced to uh, take up arms again, mm -hmm. but uh, his forces were defeated, so he fled to uh, Sabah, but the Malaysians uh, arrested him mm -hmm. and uh, brought him back to Manila, wherein Gloria Arroyo incarcerated him in uh, Santa Rosa. Mm -hmm. So this awakened Nurmis Wari to the fact that the Malaysians were just using him and... Uh, double dealing, double dealing. Yes, and uh, now that uh, the MNLF is no longer useful to Malaysia, uh, the Malaysians uh, got the uh, MILF mm -hmm. to its side and uh, funded the uh, MILF so that uh, the MILF will come up with uh, Bangsamoro so that Mindanao will be separated from the Philippines and Mindanao will become the 14th state in the Federation of Malaysia. So, uh, Nurmi Suari exposed to the world this evil plan of Malaysia because uh, it was uh, uh, discovered by scientists that there is a tremendous amount of uh, oil, natural gas, and uranium mm -hmm. in Mindanao. Mm -hmm. And if you will read the uh, Bangsamoro law, uh, oil, natural gas, and uranium are uh, uh, mentioned several times in different uh, sections and clauses mm -hmm. of that law. Mm -hmm. So in fact, uh, oil, natural gas, and uranium uh, exist uh, in Mindanao and that's the plan of the British, the Americans and the Malaysians to separate Mindanao from the Philippines so that they can get their hands on the oil, natural gas and uranium in Mindanao just as they have already gotten their hands on the oil and natural gas in Sabah. Friday, all I hear is separatism, no? Separatism. You have liberation funds. First, Malaysia puts in the MNLF to break Mindanao from the Philippines. Now, Malaysia comes in breaks up the MNLF, makes it into the MILF. Now they're making use of the MILF. Uh, could that be the reason why you had uh, uh, Prime Minister Razak coming during the coming and visiting to the uh, Philippines in order to be witness to the uh, historical signing uh, with the MILF and uh, President Noy Noy Aquino? 
Yes, because it was the Malaysian who actually penned the framework agreement and the uh, Bangsamoro basic law. It was not the Filipinos that, uh, that are the authors of the framework agreement and the Bangsamoro basic law. It was the Malaysians. That's why it, we will study the uh, documents themselves. Uh, the terms being used are uh, Malaysian terms, mm -hmm. uh, strings from the Filipinos. Mm -hmm. Like uh, instead of uh, referring to the national government as national government, uh, they refer it. Uh, re they refer to it as uh, the central government, mm -hmm. and uh, it is a parliamentary system and not a presidential system. Mm -hmm. That's why it is attuned to the Malaysian system. So when the proper time comes, uh, Bangsamoro will. Uh, declare uh, independence from the Philippines and join the Federation of uh, Malaysia. So it has its uh, parliamentary system, it has its uh, wali, mm -hmm. which is the uh, head of state, uh, which can be one of the uh, uh, kings of, uh, rotate, of the rotating kingship of Malaysia, uh, Yang Di Pertuan Agong, and uh, it has uh, prime minister, uh, chief minister. So everything is uh, patterned after the Malaysian system. So at the proper time, Mindanao will be uh, separated from the Philippines and become the 14th state of the Federation of Malaysia. What was the interest of Noy Noy Aquino to allow this to happen? If not for uh, uh, you know, the intervention of certain events, the Supreme Court, etc., etc., uh, this, uh, this, this stopped it at, 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 at its heels. But what was the motivation? What pushed, uh, again, President Noy Noy Aquino to, to really somehow listen to Malaysia and, and, and push forward this kind of uh, peace settlement, supposedly, with the MILF? Well, uh, there are allegations that uh, Noy Noy Aquino received $750 million from the Malaysians uh, through a bank in uh, uh, DGC. And... Uh, there are also allegations that uh, Noy Noy Aquino is one of the owners of uh, Petron and uh, Petron was given uh, several oil fields by the Malaysians in Sabah and at the same time, uh, that's the uh, upstream, at the same time the Malaysians have given uh, downstream uh, gasoline stations uh, all over Malaysia with the first gasoline station uh, the one who cut the ceremonial ribbon being uh, Noy Noy Aquino himself mm -hmm. and also the respect that uh, uh, one of the airlines of Malaysia uh, is now owned by, uh, partly owned by uh, the family of uh, Noy Noy Aquino. Mm -hmm. So these allegations, uh, I don't know if they are true, uh, may betray the uh, financial uh, motive behind his uh, betrayal of the Republic. Could it be possible that you, the Malaysians were also somehow involved in the removal of uh, President Erap Estrada, because President Erap Estrada was able to uh, uh, get back almost 40 satellite camps and, of course, uh, Camp Abu Bakar. Could that, uh, we're hearing stories of that nature that this was a confluence of several interests, uh, Malaysia, even the United States, etc., etc., why he was uh, eventually removed. Uh, the sad fact is that uh, it is true that uh, not only that, our supposed ally, the Americans, uh, again, uh, sided with the Malaysians uh, because it's, it is the Americans that uh, have been partly giving arms and ammunition and funds to the Moro Islamic uh, Liberation Front. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, Ambassador Kirsty Kenny, right after they ousted the uh, Arab from power, Ambassador Kirsty Kenny visited the uh, headquarters of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front in uh, Camp Dalapanan against uh, diplomatic protocols. Mm -hmm. You are not supposed to uh, go to a uh, rebel camp of your uh, allied country. What's the, what's the interest of the United States again with Mindanao? Is it about oil again? Yeah, oil, uh, natural gas, and uh, uranium. Because uranium is very important for uh, uh, the Americans. They do not want uh, the oil, natural gas, and uranium in Mindanao to fall into the hands of the Filipinos. They want it for themselves, for the British, and for the trusted ally, uh, Malaysia. And do, and, they, uh, and do they feel, the British or the Malaysians or the Americans, do they feel uh, it is easier to negotiate with the, the MILF in, in securing all these kinds of natural, uh, na na natural gases and uh, na natural riches? Of course, because the MILF is uh, beholden to them. Uh, the, the arms, the uh, ammunition, the funds, 
of the MILF come from uh, America, especially the Barrett Rifle mm -hmm. that uh, have uh, uh, massacred the Sub-44. The, the Barrett Rifle has a bullet that is uh, armor-piercing. Mm -hmm. That's why the Sub-44, even though they were wearing uh, Kevlar helmets and Kevlar uh, bulletproof vest, mm -hmm. uh, they were all uh, killed because the... Uh, the Barrett rifle of the Americans has a range of 2 kilometers, while the uh, M4 of the Sub-44 uh, cannot reach that uh, 2 kilometer uh, radius. So they were sitting ducks. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, this discussion will continue on, uh, Ferdi. And uh, I'm very glad that this, this has come up uh, as part of uh, the, the national discussion because uh, I think we seem to be forgetting uh, amidst COVID that there are also still festering and uh, ongoing crisis uh, in terms of our foreign diplomacy, in terms of our territory, and Saba definitely is still there. Uh, we, we really want to thank you for uh, explaining this again and uh, making our people realize what is really at stake, what, is, what was the history, what are we looking forward to, because if we don't, uh, if we don't uh, become careful enough, we may just wake up one day and uh, the Philippines would be dismembered. So well, uh, Eric, uh, I would just like to remind everybody that as we speak right now, the natives of Saba are being brought to Sambuanga mm -hmm. uh, despite of the pandemic because according to the Malaysians, they are not Malaysian citizens but Filipino citizens. Mm -hmm. So if the natives of Saba are Filipino citizens, therefore, Saba belongs to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. That also brings, to, <laughs> brings me to my point. That Malaysia is also a co-claimant, uh, is another claimant in the West Philippine Sea, making Sabah as their jumping point for their territory to claim West Philippine Sea, when Sabah is actually part of the Philippines and strengthens our claim over West Philippine Sea. And historically, Sabah was called the Kalamba of Rizal. So that's uh, the tri triple whammy, yes. Sabah, Spratlis, and Mindanao. Yes. That's the triple whammy of the Filipino people, brought about by Malaysia, Britain, and the U.S. Well, uh, that's why you are there, uh, Ferdi. Thank you very much again. Uh, sa ngalam po ng Republika, thank you very much, Ferdi. Uh, tuloy pa rin ang laban kahit sa gitna ng COVID. Thank you very much, Kobe. Regards to the family, regards to everyone. At uh, we have no more time. As usual, I always say, magmasid, makialam, higit sa lahat ay manindigan. Dahil wala pong magmamahal sa Pilipino kung hindi ang Pilipino. Daghang salamat. Mayang gabi, kaninyong tanan.